Welcome to the Bible is Right broadcast. I'm yours truly, Bishop M. L. Nellums of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, where our teaching, our philosophy is very simple and true. Let God's word be true and every man a liar. Here at Right Way, the Bible interprets the Bible. God does not need my endorsement or your endorsement of the truth to make it true. When the word of God is confirmed in scripture by the mouth of two or three witnesses, the Bible is right. Come on everybody, let's give the Lord some praise. Once again, we wanna thank you for joining us for the Bible is Right broadcast. I'm yours truly, Bishop M. L. Nellums, Jr. of Right Way Ministries. Uh, once again, it's a pleasure to have you tune in with us. Um, over the last several weeks, we've been uh, dealing with the five-fold ministry gifts um, that the Lord Jesus Christ gave to the body of Christ. So let's go Ephesians 4 and 11. I'm just going to read a couple of verses, and uh, then we'll get into the teaching. Ephesians 4 and 11. Um, I just want to read. And the he here is Jesus Christ. And it says, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for what? The work of what? The ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ. All right. So we've been teaching about the fivefold ministry gifts. Um, Jesus Christ gave you uh, the fivefold ministry gift. Once again, as we said, not because you wanted them, but what you need them. Because according to this scripture, you know, it's for spiritual uh, edification and maturity. Uh, it only comes when you're connected to these ministry gifts. Amen. Now. None of you would be saved right now uh, if it had not been for these ministry gifts. Somebody give God a praise. Amen. All right. Or even would you even be blessed? All right. Because it is the connection to these ministry gifts in which God bless you. And uh, what we have to understand is that your ability, listen, or inability to connect with the ministry gifts that Christ gave determines not only the level of your spiritual growth, but so much, much more. That's why I say you don't want these gifts. You what? You need them. Because when you connect with these gifts, you are saved as a result of connecting with that gift. Look at Romans 10, 14. I'm going to get back where we left off last week, but maybe there's some people who tune in for the first time uh, in this brand new year of 2022. Somebody give God a praise. And so we're just telling you and try to bring some of you guys up to speed that might be joining us for the first time. Amen. But the Bible says in Romans 10, 14, it says, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a what? A preacher. And the 15th verse says, how shall they preach except the Lord send them? Amen. So you would not even be saved tonight if it was not for these fivefold ministry gifts. Um, it is the reason many of you are prosperous. Amen. Because um, of the word of God that's coming out of that ministry gift mouth. Uh, how many know that it'll change your life? Amen. Give him a praise. Come on. You know, so the Bible says that you can believe in the Lord God and be established, but that you and I also have to believe in that gift in order to prosper. All right. So it does no good. You just believing in uh, God. You also got to believe in that ministry gift that God gave you. Amen. So these gifts are here for your healing for, for everything. So once again, you know, you got to connect with these ministry gifts. Now, the thing is, a lot of people think they are connected to the ministry gift just because they come in church and sit in the ministry. Well, just because you're in the ministry don't mean you with the ministry. 
Um, I found out that people can be living red in your house and be as far uh, apart as east and west. And, and so it doesn't mean anything because you're in some place that you're connected to it. But we actually say that you connect to that ministry gift by sowing back into the word that comes out of that ministry gift. Amen. So that's one way we connect. Also, we say you connect, as I just said, by having faith in that gift. You got to believe in the prophet. Jesus said, are you believing that I'm able to do this? And then thirdly, you got to learn how to um, practice obeying the word. Amen. James said, don't be deceived. Only those that hear are going to be blessed. Oh, I, I was hoping somebody called. I have this. Just checking once again. Some of you still uh, trying to come down from the holidays. Um, amen, somebody. Uh, um, once again, we said these ministry gifts, they're not like the spiritual gifts. You know, the spiritual gift, God gave everyone a spiritual gift. Amen. And that's a special endowment that comes on you. Uh, whether it's the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the discerning of spirit, uh, the gift of tongues, interpretation, the word of prophecy, the gift of faith, working a miracle. Gift. Those different gifts comes on us. But as we said, uh, when it comes to the ministry gift, it's not an endowment, but that person is actually the gift itself. <laughs> Remember, because Jesus said he led captivity captive. And then out of that, what he led captive, he gave what? Gifts unto the body of Christ. And uh, so, you know, uh, a lot of people, they don't realize that. We said that this ministry gift is also a divine call. The Bible said that we are to walk worthy of the vocation wherein we have been what? Called, amen, somebody. And uh, we found out that these gifts have been called by the Lord Jesus himself and that you cannot actually make yourself um, one of these ministry gifts. Somebody say amen. amen. That in fact you can only be affirmed or confirmed and uh, you know the proof of anything is in the eating. Amen somebody. I mean we can say anything we want to say but you should be able to tell one of these ministry gifts uh, once you come in contact with them, all right? Because we gave a lot of um, teaching about the evidence of the call of the ministry, amen? And so tonight I want to pick back up where we left off last week, the work of the ministry, all right? I really want to get into the teaching on the, uh, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, and pastor and teacher. Um, but as I say all times, you know, uh, we're sharing our Bible study with you guys out there. And this is what we need for our house. So hopefully we'll get into it. But let's go back to uh, Ephesians 4 and 12. Let's look at this one more time. Ephesians 4 and 12. He said, now he gave these gifts the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. He says, for the perfecting of the saints, that's maturing, spiritual maturity, but also for the what? The work of what? The work of what? Uh, according to this verse, God never intended for the ministry gift, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and teacher, he never intended them, intended for them to do all the work of the ministry. Who, who did he say supposed to do the work? Look at somebody and say, that's us. Somebody give God a praise. Who's supposed to do the work? Y'all guys supposed to do the work. And uh, as I keep studying and keep searching the scriptures here, I'm getting more and more convinced that many of the local churches are stifled and are not growing because of this one thing. The people sitting in the pews are not doing the work. Come on, give God a praise. So if the church is not growing, don't fault your pastor and leadership. Fault the people sitting in the pews. That's who you have to fault. Because what I found out that most people who come to church, 
They don't want to be inconvenienced. They just want to come when they want to come, if they want to come. They don't want to do nothing. They don't want to get involved in nothing. They don't want to give nothing. They don't want to, all right, I'll just leave it right there. Somebody get God afraid. They want to come in easy wheezy, nice and peasy, easy, easy out, and we done. Give me a word. Give me a word. Just, I, I need a word. Just so we can go back home and do nothing with the word. So we were running all over the four corners of the earth talking about give me a word when God told you to do the work of the ministry. Somebody give God a praise. Amen. And so as I keep looking into it, I'm realizing that the strength of the local church, it does not reside or depend solely on that ministry gift or the leadership that's in that church. It really depends on the laity or the members. Somebody give God a pray. You got to see how vital and how important you are. Look at Ephesians 4.16 here. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get back this here. Uh, you know, we, you got to get a fire up under you. You got to get something going with you. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of what? Every part maketh increase, come on, of what? The body unto the edifying of itself in love. All right, so the ministering, anytime you hear the word ministry, that's what it's talking about. What is it talking about? Work, it's talking about what? Work. Yeah, and so, you know, uh, you got to realize what does he mean by the work of the ministry. You know, you hear people say, oh, well, we got this ministry in our church. We got that ministry. Okay, you got to get connected and start helping with the work. All right, you got to do what? Start helping with the work. So, you know, God wants all of you to get involved in the work, not some of you. Look at Ephesians 2 and 10. Most believers, like I said, they only want to hear a good word. They want to run and shout and jump all over the church, tear up the carpet and the chair, but they don't want to do anything. And so this is what, you know, really killing uh, men in churches, because in a lot of churches, you might, if they got 50 members or if they got 100 members, maybe only 10 people are actually really doing any kind of work. I mean, see what I'm trying to say here, and it's the truth. It's the truth. Out of that hundred people, only maybe 20 of them is actually tithing and supporting like they're supposed to. So don't never be impressed with numbers because a lot of people sitting there just getting a free ride. Amen. Somebody get out of faith. Amen. And that's good when you come into the body of Christ because we all come in here lame, tore up, messed up from the flow up. Um, but if you've been around here long enough to cut whiskers, So you got to grow up. You got to roll up sleeve and get into work. Ephesians 2.10. For we are his what? Workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto what? Good works, which God before ordained that we should what? Walk. God said, I want you to walk in doing this work. All right. Look at Titus 2.14. Who gave himself, talking about Christ, for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of what? Good works. The Bible said, let people see your word. Let them see your good work. Let your light shine. All right. So I'm, I'm praying that 2022 will be the year that we can really get the body of Christ. All right. Involved in the work. Somebody get out of it. We really we got to really make that transition from just looking at a few to relying on the body. Amen. Somebody get out. We, we got to make that transition. All right. Now. Uh, go to uh, Ephesians 6 and 10 again. So we've seen in Ephesians 4, 16 that each part ministers to another part because truth is I can't do all the ministering behind the pulpit. The leaders can't do it all. Some of you, you bring people to church. When those people get in the church, connect. Look at somebody say, that's your fruit. That's your fruit. According to the word of God, you're going to receive a reward for that. 
How many believe that? You really are. And last time I didn't get to the rewards, I hope I get to the reward after I get through with the works on the night. Because like I said, right now the work is very important. We'll worry about the reward later. All right, but right now you need to do the work. All right, no, and no need you looking for something if you ain't did nothing. All right, some of you have been saved for years. Who have you brought to Christ? Who have you nurtured? Who have you encouraged? See, your, the, the works that you do ought to follow you. All right? You, you got to really ask yourself, what are you doing? Are you playing church or are you being the church? Amen. Big difference. Big difference. Huge, colossal uh, difference. All right? So he says in Ephes uh, Hebrews 6.10, he says, God is not unrighteous to forget your work and what? labor of love which we have showed toward his name in that you have ministered to the saints and do what? Minister. Now as we said once before we know that we're not saved by works because somebody listen oh no we, you don't have thought that we're not saved we're not, we're not talking about that we're talking about what the Lord asks us to do Amen. all right we're talking about what the Lord asks us to do all right uh, when it comes to the work the body, that's, that's where it's at. The body has to do it. That's why one person can't really impact the church. If one person leaves, it's just like if you leave, lose a fingernail. I mean, you, you might lose it, but you can keep going. No one has that type of impact on the church. If they leave, the church is going to close down. The church is not going to close down because you leave. It's a body. That's why you see people with one arm keep right on going living. They ain't gonna die because they just got one arm. Somebody say amen. So you, you gotta realize that there. And so you gotta realize it's, it doesn't work or the, the, the work of the ministry, it doesn't all depend on me or the leadership. You know, uh, we're here to oversee it. The leaders here are to assist me and the other pastor, first lady, somebody go, go, that's what you guys do. All right. Now, as I was saying, one of the first work that he asked us to do, and I'm going back over this, please forgive me for being repetitious, but I can see, because I know the church, that you need to hear this again. All right. Somebody said, well, Bishop, well, how, how, are we to, uh, how are we to minister to one another? All right. Well, there's quite a few ways. But the first one, like I said, you are to love who? One another. Look at 1 John, 1 John 3, 14. This is one of the primary requisites, prerequisites of you being saved. Uh, I don't believe that you're saved. Uh, and I say this all the time if you're not trying to get nobody else saved. But I also don't believe that you're saved if you're not walking in love and loving one another. <laughs> love is not a mark of Christianity. It's what? The mark. The mark. It's what? The, the mark. By this, all men, that you're my what? My disciples. We know that we have passed from what? Death to life. He's talking about this here now. To eternal life. Not because we don't got to heaven yet, but because we love who? Right. The brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in what? Yeah. He, he's saying you don't have eternal life. Watch this. Come on. Next verse. Whosoever hateth his brother is a what? Murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Now, you can't argue with this. Somebody said, I don't hate him, bitch. I just don't like him. Somebody say <laughs> pretty much the same thing. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you got to get rid of all that. Somebody go out and pray. You, you got to walk in love because we're not like the animals out there in the wilderness that, that run by impulse. However we feel, whatever our emotion. We are human beings. We're supposed to be spiritually intelligent. And we're supposed to be controlled and under the influence of the Holy Spirit, not this animalistic, impulsive spirit where we just want to do anything and say anything. That's called the flesh, by the way. Amen. We ain't supposed to be under the flesh. What are we supposed to be under? Spirit. Somebody give God a praise. We're supposed to be under the what? Spirit. Under the spirit. That's what the whole uh, 
uh, rebirth is all about being born again. A new spirit. That's what it's all about. You either have it or you don't. I mean, hear what I'm saying. All right. So we're going to know we need to love one another. Look at else what we need to do. Galatians 513. We need to serve one another. You said, Bishop, why are you going there? Because you ain't doing it. You only want people to serve you. You don't know. You only want people to submit to you. You don't know how to submit to one another in the fear of the Lord. Somebody get the heart of pray. You, you got to learn how to do this here. You got to su submit one to another in what? See, most people only want to serve and submit to me and first lady. But that's not the measuring tape. You got to know how to submit and serve one another. Somebody say amen. Come on. Come on. Give God a big praise. Come on. See, that's, see, the reason why most of this stuff is not being done is because of your spiritual immaturity. You, you, ain't, you haven't grown. Somebody get, that's why this stuff is not being done. This stuff becomes easier once you reach a level of spiritual maturity. Somebody give God a praise. The reason people in the pews are not doing this is because they're really a baby. Amen, somebody. And you can't get mad with them. You said, well, Bishop, they've been here 20 years, but they're still a baby. Because being here and not receiving the word, because a lot of times the people here are not even receiving the word. They're jumping around, running all around, hauling back instead of listening. Yes. Amen. Amen. And so after a while, you begin to see that people ain't got no word in them. Amen. You said, Bishop, how do I know people ain't got no word in them? Look at their actions. All right, so we're to serve one another. Thirdly, this is how you minister to one another. We're to forgive one another, Ephesians 4.32. You say, that's a hard one there, Bishop. No, it ain't. You can do it. Amen, you can do it. If Christ forgave you, if Christ forgave you, now I'm gonna tell you, some of you really need to work on this. And be ye kind, one to who? Tenderhearted, doing what? Forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, have what? Forgiven you. Luke 17 and 1, Jay. Here's the test right here. The test is not you living in a cave by yourself. You know, I was listening to this story where they rescued this woman that had been on the island all by herself for a long time. They were looking for her. So they finally, finally recognized her. And, and found her, you know, some kind of way, miraculously, they found this lady who had been just for a long time on this uh, island by herself. And when they got there, they saw three huts. One, they said, what are these three different huts for? They said, well, she said, well, one of them I live in. That's my hut I live in. This hut over here, I go to church in. This other hut over here is, is where I go when I get mad at this church over here. And I go over here. <laughs> <laughs> then he said then he said to the disciples it is impossible that offenses will come he said you can't get around this right. somebody is going to offend you Amen. there's no need you worrying about time I'm going somewhere else where this ain't gonna happen Amen. Jesus just told you it is mission impossible <laughs> somebody say <laughs> Jesus just told you it is mission impossible, impossible. All right. He says that's going to happen. But woe to the person who keep bringing these offenses and keep doing the same thing. And then tell out, I'm sorry. Listen, I, one time is an accident. Twice and three times is on purpose. It ain't, it ain't no accident. There are some issues going on that you need to resolve. Somebody say amen. Look at the next verse here. This good preaching. It, it would be better for him that a millstone were hanging about his neck and cast into the sea than he defend one of these little ones. Listen, people of God, God is going to begin to bring people into the house of God. We can't be judgmental and we got to know how to receive these people without offending them. All right. You can go around talking about, oh, we got rules. The letter killeth, but the spirit maketh alive. You got to have wisdom to go along with the spirit. Amen. Wisdom to go along with rules. No rules are set in stone. Yes. You got to know when to hold them and when to fold them. Yes. That's wisdom. 
Wisdom is not a collection of knowledge. It's knowing what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. That's wisdom. It's knowing how to apply knowledge, how to apply the word of God. Look at the third verse. Take heed yourself. If your brother trespass against him, do what? Now, I, I want to correct something I said last week. I said, nowhere in this list God told you to rebuke, but he did tell you to rebuke him. He says, go to your brother and tell him what's wrong. But you got to be able to say what's wrong. Yes. It, it can't be, somebody give God a prayer. You got you to be able to say. Then he says, if your brother asks you to forgive him, what you got to do? Yes. Somebody give God a prayer. You got to do what? You got to forgive him. Some of you are very, very slow about that. This is why your marriage is always in jeopardy, because you're not quick to forgive. You stay mad for weeks. No baby call your day. You just ain't good. Uh, listen, I get it. I get it because you said, Bishop, you put your, I got it. I got it. But you can't just wait for all those feelings to go away to forgive. You just got to do it in Christ by faith. Come on. How you got to do it? By faith. How you got to forgive? By faith. That means the more feelings still there. Mm -hmm. Somebody called me a couple weeks ago. And because they had offended me and hurt me, I didn't want to talk. I said, listen, hey, forget it. We're done here. It's 2022, you didn't know? Somebody say amen. But then the Lord spoke to me. He said, well, listen, you said I'm your, your, I'm your father, you're my son. If I was really your father, you would speak to those who don't want to, you don't want to speak to. You would be perfect, just like, all right, I'll leave all this alone. So you know what I had to do? I had to return the call. Amen. I said, I said, help me, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Y'all laughing, but I'm getting here, I'm, I'm getting right down in it here now. I'm getting right on down in it here. We we treading here now. Because see, this is why uh, you got to get this stuff off your back and get it in your heart. See, you just you just got come on, somebody. You just got Christ riding on your back, but you got to get him in your heart. And say, he said, oh, no. He said, listen. He said, even the people in the world, the sinners know how to do that. The heathen don't speak to folk when they get mad with them. But if you want to be like me, come on, church. Come on, come on. Get that sleep out your eyes. Come on, come on. Who wants to be like him? That's all I want to know. Who? All right. All right. You got it. Let's move on. That good or what? All right. So you got to learn how to be subject to one another. Ephesians 5, 21. You ain't got to turn that right. These down. You got to show hospitality to one another. You got to know how to confess your fault. When you're wrong, say you're wrong. Don't keep coming in here acting like nothing ain't, uh, ain't, ain't happened. Don't get in prayer and act like you ain't did nothing. You just try to go to praying like the Lord said, you know what you waiting on? I'm waiting on you to confess your sin. I'm waiting on you. Then we, we can get on down to business here. You're just going on like nothing ain't that will happen. Amen. Somebody say amen. It cracks me up sometimes in relationships how we hurt one another in the marriage. Then come in, go to eating, and go to rubbing like you want to pick up from somewhere else. It don't work like that. <laughs> so we don't have fellowship with one another. First John 1 and 7, we're to edify one another. First Thessalonians 5, 11. We're to forbear one another. Look at Ephesians 4 and 2. I'm just running through these. Y'all got them, but God bless you. It's good to keep talking about it, ain't it? Yeah. I quit talking about it when I see it being done. With all lowliness and meekness, with what? Long suffering forbearing one another that word forbear mean to put up with you got to know how to put up with folk not just these people but anywhere you go because it's in the church down the street too somebody said oh shucks I was right here hoping I could find a, a good church refuge with no cup God you're going to mess it up because we all got these issues Somebody get God ready. Let's get real now. There's stuff my wife do. I have to bear with her. I have to just put her. If I love her, I'm going to bear with her. Somebody say, hey, man, I'm, hey, I'm just going to bear with her. 
All right. And so this some of the cross that we have to carry uh, as being Christians. Somebody give God a prayer. We got to carry this. folks. We got to quit the wine and this man up, woman up. Let's do what we need to do. Amen. So who's going to love one another? Give them a big praise. Now, this is how we minister to one another. Now, there's some things he says again to do the work of the ministry. Every time you see that word ministry, it's talking about work, all right? In here, we got different ministries, okay? We got different what? Ministry. Okay, we got men's ministry, women's ministry, usher's ministry, praise ministry, worship ministry, media ministry. Uh, you have many see where we got feeding ministry? Look at somebody say, get involved with some of these ministries. Somebody give God a prayer. We got prayer ministry. This is the work. I mean, what I'm saying? See, we're not training you to go do the work of ministry in Creflo Dollars Ministry or T.D. Jakes. We're training you to work here. Somebody said, well, Bishop, I want to start this uh, some kind of off the wall ministry. And I'm like, you know something that would be nice, but we only got three people in the choir. How about helping out there? <laughs> Somebody got to the praise. That, come on, that, that kind of make any sense? Yeah. See, folks want to come here and say, oh, I want to start it. Well, we could use a prison ministry, but right now, you know, we kind of crippled on some other stuff. Amen. So, versus just sending you out to the prison by yourself, how about joining you with the rest of the team? Amen. Is that okay? Somebody say amen. So, get involved in the ministry. Amen, somebody. Um, Here's something that we got to learn how to do in the ministry here. I'm giving these to you. First Timothy 2 and 1. So I mean what I'm saying. You know, we might be having about eight, maybe ten ministries here right now. And you know, as you grow, the church grow, you can expand ministry and go to doing all kinds of stuff. You can go to going to the old folks' home. You can, all kinds of stuff. But trying to do all that stuff, we need to kind of take care of the basic ministry. Right here, how many of what I'm saying? That makes sense? Instead of, you know, trying to do a whole lot, you know, we, we shorthand it as it is. And it's everywhere you go now, even out here in the, in the world now. There's nobody who want to work. Everywhere you go, I'm paying attention to it. It ain't nobody want to do anything. I don't know because they done got all this PP money or what. I don't know what it is. I exhort thee, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplication, what? Prayers, intercessions, and giving up thanks be made for how many? All men. Come on. For kings and for all that are in who? All that are in who? Why? That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in what? He's saying to do what there? He's saying pray. Is that what is that? That's it. Is that the command there? He said, pray for who? Anybody who's over you or in authority over you. Well, instead of praying for folk, I found out what we do. We talk about our leader and we don't pray about them. Pray for them. He didn't tell you to go diss them and go talk about them. He didn't tell you to spread whatever. He told you to do what? Somebody give God a praise. Come on. See, we like to do the opposite. We like to go and talk about the person. And then, like I was saying, Sunday, we like to make all this judging about folk. And we don't really know what's going on. It might be a reason that if you talk, two people can work something out. Because you might think they're doing something on purpose to... Uh, to, to, to hurt you or to, to come against you. And truly, the people might be having problems in their own homes. But you don't, see, this is why as a leader, it ain't, it ain't about just giving orders or trying to use your influence to, 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 to manipulate or control nobody. Because see, I'm going to tell you something. As a leader, you can do stuff out of uh, trying to provoke somebody. And the Bible tells you not to do that neither. Yeah, you can do that, but you're doing it for the wrong reason. Come on, somebody say amen. See, you got to do things with the right reason behind them. 
And so what we have to do as leaders, you got to learn how to talk with the people under you to find out, well, listen, it might be a real issue. All right. Um, uh, and I hope they don't mind me using my example. Um, but Sister Carla was saying, you know, I didn't see her husband coming for a while. And I said, well, what, what's going on? I said, I hope he ain't left you or me. <laughs> That's it, right? That's it. She'll tell you. She said, oh, no, that bishop there. And next thing you know, she had her, you know, had brother call me. And the brother telling me how he had got in a financial situation and had, go, had to go ahead and work. Amen. Somebody give God praise and get some money. And so he couldn't be in the church. I'm with that guy. I sure ain't had no money to lend him. So I was glad when he was with Somebody help the preacher. But see, if I would have never communicated, I wouldn't understand that. Then I'm thinking he's just doing stuff on purpose. That's why, you know, but it, it ain't even that. See, the man heart is in the right place. He just got to do what he got to do. Sometimes we don't know the hardship and the burden that each of us are under. Just all things rolling good in your house don't mean it's running good in my house. And instead of you inquiring with me, you were guessing. And you just figure I'm doing stuff on purpose because I got an attitude. Half of the stuff ain't even about you. Amen, somebody. And so when he shows up, I can receive him with love because I know he just been trying to do what he got to do. It ain't nothing to do with me. Amen. Somebody give him a real big praise. And so one, one of the ministry we got to do, we got to learn how to pray for who? One another. One another. Who we got to pray for? One another. Don't go to talking about the person. If you got a leader, don't talk about him. Pray about him for him. Why? So you can live a peaceable life. How many hear what I'm saying? It does you no good for me to be grieved with you or you upset with me. And so you got to learn how to just pray. Say, Lord, I don't know what uh, Bishop going through, but I'm just praying. Lord, help him. Lord, strengthen him. Maybe it's something going on with his children. Uh, he, you know, he was a little snappy today because let me tell you something. I'm entitled to a bad day just like you. Now give him a big praise. Come on. Please. People don't understand that. We just, we're, we're, we got this, we got this treasure in earthen vessels. But every one of us are flawed. Amen. Every one of us. Amen. We all in the same boat. Amen. amen, somebody. So we all entitled to a bad day. That's why we, amen. It's good. Somebody give God a pray. We, we got to know. See, we talk about Christ, but a lot of times Christ ain't no worry in us. Amen. At least we don't understand his teachings. How many hear what I'm saying? Look at Ephesians 6, 18. Say this with me. Say prayer work. So he don't want you to be so quick to judge one another and everything. Because, you know, when you minister to one another, you're not to minister fault finding. So look at him. Every time he come in here, he got on the same old pair of pants. Well, buy him some. Buy him some. Pray. You see, see, everybody's, the reason you got all this here because people are spiritually illiterate. They're, they're, they're nowhere. They're nowhere. You, 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 yeah, because they do all that jumping and moving and talking. Loud. It means nothing Amen. until you can demonstrate it. It means nothing. It means nothing. I'd rather go along with a man that don't never hardly move or hardly say nothing, but can show love. Amen. Praying sometimes. Oh. With what? Always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, watching there until we all persevere. Supplication for who? For one another. All right. So this has to be a house of prayer. Get involved in the prayer ministry. Now, you should be having your own private prayer, but get involved in the prayer ministry. You should come out and ask the, the, the prayer captain, say, when can I come out and pray sometime? I mean, gosh, you don't want to do nothing. And then before the service can even turn out, you can't even wait for the benediction. I mean, what's really going on? Amen. You see, nobody wants to do what? The work. And then nobody want to do nothing. You see? So don't give your indictment why the church ain't moving forward or transitioning or ain't growing because you're the main reason it's not doing it. Amen. All right? So, you know, intercessory prayer. It's got to be a house of prayer. All right. 
Uh, he expects us. He didn't say if you pray. <laughs> when you pray. All right. Look at what else your responsibility in the work of the ministry. Because without y'all doing this, the church going to fall apart. The devil going to come in and destroy us because ain't nobody praying. And if you ain't praying, you're going to be the tool in his hand to use. All right. So what else we need to do? Bishop, I'm glad you asked. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 16 and 1. Now concerning the collections for the saints, as I've given order to the churches of Galatia, even so I'm giving the right way ministry. They ain't there, Bishop. I'm translating in <laughs> my own terms. <laughs> Upon the first day of the week, what the first day of the week? Sunday. Let every one of you lay him in store as God have what? Tithing and giving offering has nothing to do with a job. It has, has God has what? Prospered you. It has nothing to do with what? Any, any prosperity you receive, God says lay in store off of that. How many understand what I'm saying? So a lot of people want to use something, they ain't got no job. It doesn't matter. Your husband gave you something. Tired out of that. Look at 1 Peter 2 and 5. So God expects you as a member of the body of Christ and doing the work of ministry to support the ministry financially. How I many agree with that? Amen. Because this is God's economic system to do this. He didn't tell you to go out there selling fish sandwiches. <laughs> Somebody said, I'm ready to cook some chicken salad, bitch. We get it going up in there. He also has lively stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy what? Priesthood. I mean, know that you're a holy priesthood. Yeah. All of y'all, if you're saved, you're a holy what? Priesthood. To offer up spiritual what? Priesthood. Acceptable to God by who? Every week we bring our spiritual sacrifices to Jesus Christ and he gives them to God for us. Sacrifice was a central theme in the Old Testament. Everything revolved around sacrifice. There was no thing about you seeing God without sacrifice. That, that's, I'm telling you. God has not, well, let me put it like this. He has not quit taking spiritual sacrifices. People have quit giving them. Because that's the time we're living in. We're living in a time where people are only concerned about self, all right, and the issues that got. And those issues might be legitimate. You might have some real, real bills, all right, but supporting the work of God need to be another one included with it. Amen. Somebody give God a It need to be just as important as your light bill, Amen. your grocery bill, Amen. your bill to take care of your rent, your bill to take care of your mom and dad. It all need to be, it need to be right there front on top of everything. I'm not negating the fact that you don't have bills, all right? But I'm just saying, this is another bill you got. Amen. That's all right? Amen. Amen. And that's the work that Christ is asking you to do. Go, let, me, let me show you something, one more thing here. Malachi 1 and 6. I hope, I hope y'all are getting this stuff here. Because, like I said, I'm not trying to worry about other folk ministry and rather dazzle you. You know, if you happen to tune in this week and kind of think, listen, listen, I'm not even interested in this. You joining us, just keep right on joining. Amen. A son honoreth his father and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is my honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Said the Lord of hosts. Uh huh. O priests that despise my name. You say, how do we despise? Watch this. You offer polluted bread upon my altar, and you say, when we are polluted, and you say that the table of the Lord is contemptible, come on. And if you offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto the governor. 
Will he be pleased with thee or accept thy person, saith the Lord of hosts? Come on. And now I pray you, I beseech God that he will be gracious unto you. This have been by your means. Will he regard your person, saith the Lord? One more time. Who is there even among you that will shut the doors for naught? Listen, watch this. Neither do you kindle a fire on my what? My altar for naught. I have no pleasure in you, said the Lord of hosts. Neither will I accept an offering at your hand. God was getting angry with the priests and the people of God because they were offering to God anything. They were just giving anything that they wanted. And what he used that as an example, he said, you can't even do that to the governor. Amen. When you notice your check, you just can't give anything for taxes. Huh? It's a special amount. Somebody give God. You, you can't do that. Huh? He said, try to do that with the governor. And so Jesus looked at him and said, listen, we have to pay our taxes. And he told Peter, he said, go fishing. And when you find a fish, he said, go pay your taxes and mine. Your tax bill and my tax bill. And he says, render to God. Come on, the things that belong to God. And render to Caesar, the government, the thing that belongs to the government. And so God said, listen, you can't even give the, 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 the state taxes, the governor, anything. But we come into God's house and we, we, we you know, I see people, they, they take that doll, they fold it so many times, you can barely see the face on it. it, it, it it's all like this here. Somebody say amen. I know it looked like it was in a secret compartment. And when it come out, I'm like, why they crease it so many times? You, you know, <laughs> somebody say, man, you can't even haul it. You, you, you know, and, and, and so he's saying, listen, but here's the sad part. What we don't understand. We show up week after week looking for the presence of God. Come on. Ain't that what we're here for? That's come on. Ain't that what we're here for? We want we want the Shekinah glory. But listen, God says the reason you don't see the Shekinah of glory because you don't put nothing on the altar. But you're trying to praise harder than anybody. He says the only thing is going to cause the fire to come down is what's on the offering. Come on, church. So we don't bring nothing. And then we wonder why the church is stagnant. Maybe because you didn't bring your sacrifice. Somebody say amen. See, it cost me my life on that job. Yes. When you go work, you had to lay down your life. Yes. You had to give up something you had to do. You couldn't be with your wife. You couldn't be with your children. You had to go lay your life down to get yes. that money. Somebody help the preacher. Amen. Now, when you come in here, you take part of your life that you went out there during that week. And you lay it right, said, Lord, here it is. And you lay it right on the altar. And that stirs the heart of God. And next thing you know, the Shekinah glory, it fills the house. I ain't talking about all this foolishness where you jump in and ain't nothing here but you making noise. Because if the glory hit, you won't even have a dry eye in here. You'll see folks prostrated. You'll see people getting delivered. People getting healed. Come on. I ain't talking about organized religion. With the 10 piece band and you doing your, the, the, uh, doing the, what the Dougie or something. I don't know. Y'all mad yet? <laughs> Somebody say it. Amen. So, we, how many hear what I'm trying to say? It didn't make any sense? Amen. So he said, you're off the blind. I don't want this. And so this is what we're doing and we're trying to look for the glory of God. Meanwhile, your situation is still critical because you don't know how to trust God. <laughs> if you would put yourself on the altar, I don't care what your circumstances are. God is bigger. Somebody get, I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's financial. I don't care if it's relationship. I don't care if it's physical health. God is bigger. Amen. I know you don't believe that. But somebody got to preach that to you. Amen. All right. Let me say this here. Why are we talking about it here? Because first Sunday, the deacon was talking about first fruit. And a lot of times folks say, well, what do you mean by first fruit? Well, let me show you. Look at. Numbers 29, 39. 
There was actually three special offerings during the year, and I ain't got time to teach this because I only got about 10 minutes, that you offer beside tithes and offering. People do regular first fruit every week, but these were special feasts. Actually, there were seven, and I ain't got time to even get into them. But three times, um, there were special feasts where you had to do special offering. And God said concerning these offerings, that none was to appear before him empty. Everyone had to have something. See, we get getting away from these things, and then we wonder why the presence of God is void in our lives sometimes. It's because our heart really ain't after God. It's, it's the only reason. You know, that's, that's really the only reason. Somebody said, oh, it's the music. They ain't doing their job. Listen, if your heart was after God, you wouldn't even need all that music. Come on, y'all. Where the old time is at, man? We, the president of God would come in there and we'd be doing like this here, man. That, the church I came out of, you, you didn't need no 10-piece band. And you crying about talking about they got the same old song. No, you just an old song your own self. Ain't nothing got nothing to do with no song. Your heart not everywhere but God. These things you shall do unto the Lord in your set feast besides what? Beside your vows, beside your free will offering, beside your birth. He said, this is extra. Amen. Somebody, I got two, three. One hand went up. That was it. Leviticus 23, 37. Somebody said, Bishop, you know what? You <laughs> I'm just trying to help you. I'm just trying to help you. Because let me tell you something. You got bills. And even though you got bills, you do extra. Amen. Some of y'all in Orlando, you got bills do. I don't say nothing. Somebody say, man, y'all on Facebook like this here, don't like this here. I'm thinking about that. Don't they know they got bills too? <laughs> these, are, these are the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy what? Convocation. To offer an offering made by fire to the Lord, a burnt offering, and a what? Come on, come on, Jay. A sacrifice and drink of everything upon this day. Watch this. Beside the Sabbath of the Lord, beside your gifts, Beside your vow, beside your free will, beside your offerings. Wow. Looks like that means extra. Look at 2 Chronicles 31 and 5. So, you know, this is God's financial plan. And, you know, when the believers come together, the church can really impact the community. But most churches are just barely surviving. Amen. Barely surviving. And I, once again, you can't blame the leadership or the, the, the pastor. It's the people we're at in the pew. Somebody give God a pray. It's more pe people more about looking like they're saved than really being what they need to be. They want to give you impressions that, uh, you know, look at me, I'm saved. Second Chronicles 31 and 5. You don't have to do that. God see you. Yeah, so I look at folks. They don't really support the church. They... All in Georgia, they all in Alabama, all everywhere, just riding around and stuff there. And they show back up, hoping the church still here. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, they ain't sent now coin. But then when they get here, they just like a rubber ball right up to the ceiling. And I'm like, I say, I wish you would put in money the way you're jumping. <laughs> And that's true. I bet you ain't all about money. Well, what the problem is then? <laughs> what the problem is? Amen. A guy had a sign up said, we'll work for food. I'm thinking to myself, okay, what the problem is? That's what we all doing. Working for food. And as soon as the commandment came <laughs> abroad, the children really brought in abundance of the what? Is that, is that, that's the one? Yeah. He brought a bunch of first fruit, corn, wine, oil, honey, and all the increase of the field and the what? Look at somebody said that was extra. That was extra. Yeah, somebody give God a praise. And so, you know, they didn't really, you know, 
a lot of y'all know that, but then some people might be, well, well, what are they talking about first fruit? And I thought this might have been a good time for me to try to plug it in uh, tonight. Amen, somebody? Amen. All right, let me give you two more, and uh, uh, we're we going to keep moving, all right? And uh, you said, bitch, you still didn't do the other thing. I know, but I promise you next week we're going to start on the gift. But I, I, we just got to get to work. Amen. We do. I, I'm not worried about the gifts. The gifts are going to take care of themselves. You, you in the pews got to do what? Work. You got to get to work. You got to get to work. Acts 1 and 8. That's what killing the churches is killing the churches. And I found out people rather than support. You, you know, it's the same thing everywhere you go. It's the same principles. Nothing changing. All right. Acts 1 and 8. You shall receive power after that. The Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be what? Witnesses. All right. So God is looking for you to be witnesses unto him. What do you mean? You, you, you're supposed to tell people what God has done for you. Amen. How he saved you. And you're supposed to be bringing people to church, compelling them into the house, trying to get folks saved, all right? I don't believe you're saved if you're not trying to get nobody else saved. You need to be trying to get people saved. How many hear what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I, I want to say this here because we've gotten away from the mission of evangelism. And after a while, we just become a monument instead of a movement. But we need to get back out there and start trying to get our family saved. Somebody give God a big prayer. We got to do that. I know they mean as rattlesnakes and stuff, but listen, we got to try to do our best. Amen? Because uh, hell is not no place none of us want to go. I promise you, it ain't. So let's, let's remember that there. Every ministry should be doing the work of an evangelist. We need to be evangelizing, getting the lost saved. How can people get saved if you don't bring nobody? That's my question. You say, oh, nobody ain't getting saved. Well, maybe they would if you brought somebody. Kind of makes sense. How are you going to get somebody saved? They already saved. He's telling you to bring the people who aren't saved. Therefore, you got to realize there are going to be people in the church doing all kinds of things, and you got to know how to deal with folk. You can't be judging these folk time they come in. Somebody said, give God a prayer. I'm getting all that stuff when we get into the gifts. All right. Let me give you one more, and then I'm going to quit, all right? Second Thessalonians 2 and 1. I'm just talking about the Word. And I wanted to get into some real other stuff tonight, but I could do it next week, but I'm going to get into the gifts, I promise. Amen. We beseech you, brethren, by the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you're gathering together unto who? Unto him. We are gathering together unto the Lord. Because gathering is so, so important that what you need to do as a believer in the ministry, we need to gather. Because this is where God gives his instructions at. This is where God gives his teaching at. This is where you learn. Somebody say amen. And so if you're not gathering with the saints, how are you going to learn? You know, because a lot of folks don't realize um, the church is an assembly of people. Those that have been called out by God and they assemble together. Hebrews 10, 25, Jay. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. All right. So God expects us to assemble and then he expects to come in the midst of us as we praise and worship him. All right. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is. And we know that people are going to miss church here and there. I mean, understand that. I mean, nobody, don't be stuck on, you know, this stuff. You know, we understand that. But he says, exhorting one another so much more as you see the day approaching. Doing what? Exhorting one another. When I see you, it strengthens me. Amen. It encourages me. It's my, it makes me feel good. Amen. Come on, I'm the only one. No, that's where we draw strength from one another. We draw courage from one another. When you go to staying away from that, you go to getting discouraged. Fear go to coming in. But as long as you're together, it's protection and everything. That old lion out there, I watch him and I got to hurry up and close. He does his best to get that little sheep or wildebeest away from the, uh, the rest of the herd. 
Go buy there by himself, he's done. But as long as he's in the body, he's right there, he, it's, it's protection. It, it's, I mean, see what I'm saying? So he does his best, and so he just might follow the herd alone. What he's looking for, those that are sick. Those that are lagging behind. See, those are them, that's the easy kill. Somebody say amen. No, no you got to stay. You got, you got to sum together. It, God ain't, God, I don't see nowhere he told you to change that cost of COVID. I don't see nowhere where he says that cost of COVID. Somebody say, oh, bitch, you, you got to have common sense. Common sense. Well, listen, <laughs> you mean to tell me, I got to quit. You mean to tell me you're locked up in your house 24 hours a day. You do not come out, period. That's what you're telling me. No. When I go to public, I see folks have assembled there. <laughs> they have. They have. I said, can you please help me? I'm looking for the mayonnaise. They're all for everybody assembled. Somebody say amen. amen. It's just church people come with this nonsense. Amen. Tomorrow, somebody said, oh, I'm working at home, but some of you ain't, you'll be assembled. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. So listen, let's, let's get more serious about the work of Christ and watch God do some great things in your life. Somebody give God a praise. Amen. Listen, if the word, the teaching is being a blessing to you, listen, so back into the word and watch God transform your life. Also, maybe you're not saved tonight. Why don't you consider making Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? And uh, listen, come out and visit us. We're located at 3280 West Bravo Boulevard, and we have service um, Every, every Sunday at 1030. Uh, we're right in the heart of Broward County. We're right on Broward Boulevard. Somebody give God a pray. We, we're right in the heart of Broward County, right in the heart of Fort Lauderdale. You can't miss us. And you come out and watch God do some great things in your life. Also remember 2 Corinthians 13 and 8. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. And until we see you next week, the Bible. God bless you. Love you. for tuning into the Bible is Right program. As always, if this message was a blessing to you spiritually, we're asking you to activate your faith by sowing back into the Word of God to reap a harvest into your own personal lives. Or if you want to follow us, you can follow us on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or you can do like so many members and those that follow us continuously download our app in the background at google play store it's free where you can get every message and be blessed every day and i want to thank you once again for tuning in and remember second corinthians 13 and 8 for we can do nothing against the truth but for the truth and remember as always the bible is right